Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in the next session, um, um, from UNESCO, we will be sharing about uh, the international decades of indigenous languages. And uh, we have a recorded message from our colleague from UNESCO Paris, um, Chief of Section for Universal Access to Information. Let us watch together. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to address you on the occasion of the Wikimania 2023 conference, celebrating the International Decade of Indigenous Languages that stretches from 2022 to 2032. This event, with its theme on diversity, collaboration and the future, provides the ground for significant exchange on the state of Indigenous languages and to expand the possibilities of digital empowerment of Indigenous language users. This will not only lead to the development of a richer, more culturally and linguistically diverse world, but has the potential to aid us in fostering sustainable development and building uh, open, peaceful and participatory societies for the future. I would like to thank the Wikimedia Foundation and my colleagues from the UNESCO office in Jakarta for their role in organizing this event, as well as all of you that are present during this event. The proclamation by the United Nations General Assembly of the International Decade of Indigenous Languages put languages and the importance of Indigenous languages squarely on the development agenda. The International Decade was officially launched on 13 December 2022 during a high-level event that gathered policymakers, representatives from UN mechanisms and Indigenous peoples' organizations, as well as the private sector, in order to set the stage for a decade of decisive action aimed at protecting, preserving and revitalizing Indigenous languages worldwide. The event drew significant participation from 125 countries, more than 2,300 participants, of which 13 countries from the Asia and the Pacific region were represented. But why the decade? It's because despite the immense value of languages, the mass majority of the approximately 7,000 languages worldwide are used by indigenous peoples and are at risk of falling into disuse. The reasons for language endangerment vary across different communities and locations as Indigenous peoples worldwide experience challenges connected to migration, educational disadvantage, illiteracy, assimilation, or even enforced relocation. In the Asia Pacific region, we see a remarkable level of cultural and linguistic diversity with an estimated 3,000 languages spoken. Various languages are spoken by indigenous and immigrant communities, but it is essential that communities have opportunities to use them in public spaces, create new content and cultural products in these languages, and make the most out of knowledge systems that is associated with indigenous long languages. The International Decade advocates for government policies that cater for the use of Indigenous languages in education, healthcare, the judiciary system, and all realms of public life. UNESCO is committed to assist stakeholders to preserve, revitalize, and promote Indigenous languages across all sociocultural, economic, environmental, and political domains. Of course, in cooperation with the United Nations Department for Economic and Social Affairs, the Office of the High Commission of Human Rights, and the International Fund for Agricultural Development, and many other partners that are on board. One of the important ways in which the international decade seeks to accomplish its goals is through the creation of partnerships between indigenous language speakers and those engaged in the areas such as those that I just mentioned. Private sector partnerships is also clearly marked within one of the output areas of the Global Action Plan of the Decade, and we seek to foster 
relationships with them that will contribute to a long-term sustainable development of indigenous languages. The International Decade provides us with a unique opportunity in this regard and offers important entry points for tangible and long-term action among all stakeholders, embracing the themes of diversity, collaboration, and projecting us to the future, which is highlighted in this conference that we are present. Now, in order to keep the momentum of this 10-year period of the decade, one of the main objectives in the scale-up phase from this year until 2026 is the establishment of national action plans, wherein local actors can work together to localize the global action plan, tailoring it to the specific context and needs of each country. This must happen in consultation with local indigenous populations and representatives to ensure that their voices are heard and taken into account in the decision-making process. Currently in the region, Australia, Nepal and New Zealand are in the process of developing national action plans for indigenous languages. But we hope to help this number growing and to see more countries coming on board. Knowing how linguistically, culturally, socially and historically diverse the Asia and Pacific region is, it is imperative to adapt the framework that's laid down by the Global Action Plan to the realities of the region on the ground. The development of national action plans is also a means to secure a stronger commitment on the part of national entities involving a wide range of stakeholders and pushing indigenous languages and their speakers to the forefront for policy action. The national action plans can also privilege the importance of digital empowerment. This involves the development of capacities in media information literacy, digital and online activism, on the creation of multilingual content online, respecting the principles of openness interoperability, reusability, accessibility, and diversity. Such action of digital empowerment is also in line with the UNESCO 2003 recommendation concerning the promotion and use of multilingualism and universal access to information in cyberspace. The recommendation, the recommendation and I quote, seeks to alleviate language barriers and promote human interactive action on the internet by encouraging the creation and processing of and access to educational, cultural and scientific content in digital format, so as to ensure that all cultures can express themselves and have access to cyberspace in all languages, including, of course, indigenous languages. With this in mind, the Wikimedia movement, with its emphasis on free knowledge and collaboration of, in content making, can play a significant role in supporting the International Decade of Indigenous Languages at the global, regional, national and community levels. On the front of content creation, Wikimedia projects, particularly Wikipedia, can serve as a platform to create and expand articles on Indigenous languages, cultures and related topics. This would include writing articles, improving existing content and translating relevant articles into indigenous languages to ensure their preservation and dissemination. The Wikimedia can also support initiatives aimed at digitizing and documenting indigenous languages. This includes partnering with indigenous communities, language experts and organizations working in the field to create digital resources such as online dictionaries, grammar guides and audio recordings of indigenous languages. These resources can be integrated into Wikimedia projects, making them freely accessible to a global audience. The Wikimedia movement can also explore the development of technological solutions and tools to support the documentation, revitalization and preservation of indigenous languages or collaborate on similar projects that are already underway. 
This can involve creating language-specific applications, software or platforms that facilitate language learning, transcription and archiving. Open source tools can empower Indigenous communities to actively participate in language preservation efforts. Collaboration with Indigenous language advocacy groups, academic institutions and cultural organizations can strengthen the Wikimedia movement's support for the international decade. These partnerships and willingness to support initiatives can facilitate the exchange of knowledge, expertise and resources, leading to the development of innovative projects and initiatives that address the specific needs of Indigenous communities. Specific actions to be taken have to include a variety of stakeholders, which is at the essence of the international um, decade. And this includes also work with the Wikimedia Foundation and working with in, within the local context with the communities and their spe speakers. Collaborating closely with Indigenous communities and respecting their human rights is crucial to ensure that this support aligns with their aspirations and goals, as well as the normative frameworks guiding the international decade of Indigenous languages. In conclusion, it is essential that we take this moment to apply the recommendations set out in the Global Action Plan on a national and international scale facilitating the use of multilingual and linguistically diverse resources on the internet, all while involving the input of Indigenous peoples at every stage of the process. UNESCO very much look forward to continuing working in close cooperation with its partners for the promotion of multilingualism and linguistic diversity to make this a truly transformative decade of action for Indigenous languages and those that speak the languages. In this respect, we have just launched the co-publication of a children's book on the subject of languages called What Makes Us Human. It is authored by Dr. Victor Santos and is currently available in eight languages. We must act for languages as public goods for future generations leaving behind a legacy that tells them, as Victor does in his book, that language is the greatest invention of all, connecting us to the past, to the present, and the future. Languages makes us human. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Um... If in his presentation, my colleague Jaco highlighted three things. First, the importance of international decades of indigenous languages from a global perspective. And second, how we could benefit from digital empowerment and how Wikimedia movement through its digital platform and collaborative content creation could play significant roles in supporting IDEAL. My presentation, um, which is very short, seven minutes, will specifically share UNESCO Jakarta and Bangkok offices activities in promoting and safeguarding indigenous languages. In terms of our function, both UNESCO Jakarta and Bangkok are multi-sectoral regional offices with five areas of programs education, natural science, social human science, culture and communication and information. The selected activities I'm going to uh, present or talk about today will be um, more of the work um, um, of the communication information unit. Um, and Jakarta office itself uh, covering um, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines and Timor-Leste, while uh, uh, Bangkok office is covering Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. In delivering our work on IDEAL, uh, we are guided by the standard setting instruments of UNESCO, which are earlier set by Mr. Jaco, the Global Action Plan and the 2003 recommendation 
to, to promote multilingualism and in universal access to information to cyberspace. And a lot of uh, activities we are doing are to support uh, our local partners initiative. And some of the initiatives Jakarta is, uh, uh, have, uh, have done um, through collaboration with um, Bangkok office. This is just the most recent example, which also uh, Ms. Maki mentioned earlier. Through our sister office, UNESCO Bangkok hosted an online forum to celebrate World's Indigenous People Day on the 9th of August. The theme of this year's Indigenous Day is Youth as the Agent of Change for Self-Determination. The webinar showcased a collection of short documentary videos that were created by indigenous youth under a project called Hooked on Peace. UNESCO support Asia Pacific indigenous youth in documenting and collecting traditional stories relevant to the themes, uh, gender equality, peace building, and sustainability in their local communities. And these documentary videos will also be available on the Wikimedia Commons. Now, for the Philippines, we supported the University of the Philippines Visayas in organizing a conference on indigenous languages and the SDGs. This is also a collaboration with Bangkok office. Uh, uh, we use an existing connection um, from our sister office, uh, Bangkok office. And through UNESCO funding support, support, uh, we were able to bring the participation of indigenous people, indigenous leaders, educators from remote areas in the Philippines, such as Aita and Ati groups to the conference. And this conference was also considered the first event held in the Philippines or even in Southeast Asia that is associated with IDEAL after the global launch in December 2022. Now, majority of our activities are currently held in Indonesia, where UNESCO Jakarta is based. Um, and the next few slides will be an example to some of the activities related to the preservation of indigenous scripts and languages in Indonesia. We are actually really hoping to continue to reach out to more countries under UNESCO Jakarta in the following years. Um, just now, this morning and this afternoon, we had a very fruitful discussion with the communities uh, from Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines, uh, um, Indonesia. So, yeah. So, in Indonesia, uh, through our existing connection with the Indonesian Internet Domain Association, or known as PANDI, that is an organization, non-profit, that sits under the Ministry of Communication and Informatics, we were able to work with the local partner to organize a seminar to discuss how we can better safeguard and preserve Indonesian scripts and languages in digital platform. And during this seminar, I was able to meet Indonesian partners and local communities who were really passionate about preserving indigenous scripts and languages and making them accessible online on the internet. And thanks to the work of these people, Indonesia now has a dedicated directory of arts and literature collections from seven different indigenous languages. We are hoping more, more indigenous languages. And this is a PANDIS flagship uh, program that UNESCO supported since 2020. Um, yeah, 2020. Um, the name of the program is Connecting Indonesia Through Digitization of Nusantara Manuscript. And uh, Pandi told us that the registration process was long and very complex, but thankfully, there have been seven local scripts now available for use online. And in the future, UNESCO is hoping to see more Indonesian scripts available online for use. Um, another activity we do uh, will be in the form of an exhibition. Uh, we will believe it's an efficient, effective way for awareness raising, um, as picture speaks louder uh, than words. And here, picture, uh, we work with the National Human Rights Commission and the Indonesian photojournalists in celebrating Human Rights Day. 
And one of the theme is about the life of indigenous people. Uh, and the selected photos was from Papua. Uh, you see from the picture here, it's an indigenous community far away from Papua, Kasep Kapeso. There are two other uh, communities from Solo and from Jambi um, and Riau, South Sumatra, but Papua was selected. And then um, this is one of um, UNESCO flagship program, which is the memory of the world, preserving, digitizing, and ensuring universal access to documentary heritage. And the MOOC committee exists at national, regional, international level. The guideline has just revised in 2023, um, and it emphasizes uh, special efforts should be made to encourage and facilitate nominations from indigenous and minority or marginalized group. And this is our work in um, media information literacy, literacy from uh, Bangkok office, where they produce seven minutes to understand AI, now available in 12 languages in Cambodia and Vietnam. My time is up, but <laughs> this will be my li last slide. Uh, Finally, besides tapping into and supporting initiatives on ideal linguistic diversity and multilingualism in cyberspace-related events, UNESCO also try to raise awareness by celebrating international days that are relevant and having a social media com campaign. And present here are just uh, two examples from Jakarta. This one is from Jakarta and Bangkok in celebrating International Mother Language Day on the 21st of February 2023. Now, I would like to conclude my presentation by reiterating again Mr. Jacob's remark. 2022 and 2026 is the scale-up phase of IDEAL to localize the global action plan into the national action plan. And UNESCO very much looks forward to continuing working in close cooperation with its partners and in this case, Wikimedia Foundation, for the promotion of multilingualism and linguistic diversity to make a truly transformative decade of action for indigenous languages. It will be our all main goal to leave no one behind, no one outside by 2032. Thank you for your attention and support. All right.